So um, there's a quote by Arthur C. Clarke that says, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So in an age where we're engulfed by technology, where we rely on it, rely on it so heavily daily to how we communicate, to how we travel, to how we post incriminating pictures of friends the day after, um, it's quintessential that we have a generation that truly understand technology, uh, can create, innovate, and improve, and identify when things come along to, to threaten our digital rights, digital freedoms, and, di and privacy. Essentially, we need more creators and less users, or in the context of Arthur C. Clarke, we need less muggles and more wizards. So this is one thing that Coder Dojo is addressing. And what is Coder Dojo? Well, it's an Irish-led global movement of coding clubs for young people. Um, it was set up by myself and Bill, and the environment that Coder Dojo spawns is difficult to encapsulate. Uh, so they say that a picture says a thousand words. Well, here's a thousand words in Coder Dojo. But <laughs> I think for the sake of time, we're, we're probably better off just showing you a picture. Uh, this is taken at uh, Coder Dojo in GitHub in San Fran. Essentially, young people come and um, they meet other young people who are interested in coding. They show off what they've been working on, make friends. Professionals volunteer their time to come teach and show these young people. Um, and with Coder Dojo, we have one over overruling rule. It's be cool. Anything like lying, bullying, and cheating, that's not that cool. But Helping others or open sourcing code or, or doing something really complicated and awesome, well, that's, that's truly cool. And we've seen Coder Dojo grow from Cork to Dublin to New York, San Francisco, London, Tokyo, hell to even Aaron Moore off Donegal. But it, with this, um, we decided at the very start to create a very scalable system and take the basics. So you've got space, and tables and chairs, Wi-Fi or projector, and um, some volunteers to help them to, in these kids' eyes, are often seen as superheroes. And how did Code Dojo start? Well, it came out of frustration. Um, to essentially sum up my six years in second level education, uh, it kind of comes like this. Um, from being a young person who was so enthused and passionate about technology, yet for there to be no exposure to it in school, for career guidance teachers not to be able to give you any information about appropriate college courses, depending on what route you want to go, nowhere to meet other young people who are interested in this, learn or show off, um, and get help. I mean, there's countless times where people have cried in front of a compiler. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, me and, me and Bill, when we were 13, we were pretty nerdy kids. I like to think we've changed a bit <laughs> since then, but, we, when, <laughs> see this would be a lot better if I still had my beard, I shaved it in one day, um, but essentially, you know, when we finished and we met, we knew what it was like, we knew what it was like being young and having all these things, and particularly when you're not academic and sporty, but your thing is computers, and there's, there's no place for you, and typically the people who mentor at Coder Dojo, they can relate to this uh, too, and when they see the, the enjoyment that young people get from doing this, um, it's, it's often quite a powerful thing. Um, so where's Coder Dojo today? Well, we founded it on the 28th of June in 2011 here in Cork. Um, on our first birthday, we had over uh, 100 dojos internationally. Um, spread across Europe, uh, the USA, uh, Asia, and now breaching Africa. Uh, we've got an amazing community. Some of our mentors and volunteers are here in the audience tonight um, who are really passionate about it and help to every day improve it and get it bigger and better. Um, there's major demand internationally. The amount of emails is, is incredible um, that we receive. There's major companies involved who've identified the benefit of Coder Dojo to, uh, to so many young people and to society. Um, we have an upcoming, upcoming Coder Dojo conference, um, which is incredible because it's gonna be a, um, a mentors coming from both nationally and internationally to come discuss best guidelines, share what they've learned, and overall strengthen the movement. And while all keeping it free with no money changing hands or no bank account, and all open source um, to really instill the values that we teach. Um, and some of, the coder, some of the companies who've opened up Coder Dojos in their offices and run these every Saturday include Twitter, or McAfee, Big Fish Games, GitHub, and Google. And you know, with something as awesome as this, there's only one thing that could potentially beat it. A picture of Obama riding a skateboard, jumping over a shark. <laughs> Holding nunchucks. <laughs> you keep the, you keep the <laughs> clicker. So Coder Dojo wouldn't have worked However, if we hadn't have built a brand, if we'd gone with the original name, Saturday Morning Programming Club for Kids, it just <laughs> wouldn't have scaled. Coder 
is the coolest word we could find out find for, for programming. And dojo is an essential piece because a dojo, the dojo system of learning is how you learn a martial art, particularly karate or kendo. It involves subject matter experts who mentor students. It does not involve teachers. So we haven't set out to create an education system. We've set out to create a reboot, a learning environment where the ability to code shows up. Rather than a pedagogy, which is a fancy word for educational system, we have a play dagogy. This is essential. You see, it is our contention that kids learn best when they play with stuff. And they learn best not when they play with toys, as was previously said, but when they play with power tools. So we give them the actual stuff that works. We don't want kids, and particularly my kids, I don't want them to just be shaped by technology. I want them to shape technology. And if someone hands you an iPad, there's very little you can do to the fundamental workings of it. But if you know how to code, you can reach into that and you can bend it to your will. The best programmers I know learned at a very young age. They became native speakers. They, in fact, became poets, because just as poets can compress more meaning into fewer words, so too great programmers, native speakers in code, can compress more functionality and more impact into fewer lines. The power that is unleashed when you take a muggle and turn them into a whiz kid is superb. And the beauty of a pedagogy is that the mentors who show up absolutely get a huge buzz. I am totally familiar with the concept of having a room full of kids and how big a buzz that is. In fact, I think uh, George Bernard Shaw said that we do not stop playing because we grow old, but we grow old because we stop playing. And the environment that allows mentors, parents, and kids to just play with this stuff is so powerful and so infectious that it just works. Now, when we came up with the Coded Dojo brand, we wanted to make sure it was free. We wanted to make sure it was scale-free. In a way, we had a clean slate to design something that worked, and we iterated it very quickly. The results have been phenomenal. We have kids releasing apps every week. We have new and innovative technology being taught at a high level. Things like Node.js, which you would never see in a, in a college course, are being taught at Coda Dojos. When I look back at what we've achieved in one year, I would like to note that the mentors of Coda Dojo have collectively donated around about 23 million euros worth of their time for a movement that doesn't even have a bank account. That is an extraordinary expression of generosity. And I promise you they get it back in spades from the joy that they experience. If you look at your own kids, would you not rather have them grow up to be creators? Even if they go into another field, wouldn't it be better for them to be able to understand how to reach behind the screen and make something happen? So. With Coder Dojo, there's all sorts of implications. There's a social implication. There's young people meeting other young people who are interested in this and making friends. And there's an economic implication. With a country that's fast approaching 15% unemployment, yet thousands of vacancies in technology, there's a technological impl uh, implication. With young minds that haven't yet been crippled and molded by um, social conventions that people gain when they're older, that they can see things in a new light, and even better, they can see imp implement these visions. This is societal change, um, where there's this generation that understands and realize and see when major threats come to the aforementioned digital rights, freedoms, and privacy, which is becoming ever so more present. And there's an education implication, that we're filling a massive void in education, but doing it in a fun environment outside of school. So funnily enough, what gets kids hooked are these two words, hello world. It's like a pleasing the voodoo tiki gods in programming. It's essentially your first program you make to say the words hello world. 
And to a young person, they've created something to give an instruction to a computer, um, and the computer has performed it. And then from there, all sorts of um, opportunities and, and, and thoughts burst into their mind. And it's something that gets them hooked instantaneously. So, I mean, with Coder Dojo's taking all around the world and all sorts of stories of kids who've had app store successes and I think used the profits to um, buy cute girls in their class chocolate bars and all this kind of stuff, <laughs> you know, there's one really powerful story that I heard recently. Um, when we were celebrating our one-year birthday, I was at a, a programming meetup, and uh, a father uh, and a mentor at Coder Dojo um, was speaking. And because it was the one-year birthday, he just said first that uh, Coder Dojo had made a, a big impact in his life. And so speaking to him after I was a bit in, afterwards, I was a bit intrigued. And I said, oh, you know, how's everything? What's the crack? Um, and he started to get a bit teary, and he said that, uh, when he started mentoring at Coder Dojo, he start, his daughter started attending also. And his daughter had been diagnosed with ADHD and academically and, and in school wasn't getting on the best. And it's, it's not a nice place to be, and a lot of us have been in that place. But when she started going to Coder Dojo, she met other girls who were interested in technology. She was able to talk about things um, like uh, iOS and languages and all sorts of stuff, and not the stuff like fashion or music that she didn't find as important or fun. And the following uh, Christmas, the, uh, when her father went in for the parent-teacher meeting, and his teacher was bemused as to um, what had they had done, because now she was socially getting on better, she was a lot more chill, and academically she was uh, improving quite a lot. And at this point, he was in tears at me, and I was getting kind of freaked out. But it was an incredibly powerful thing. And something as simple as getting a bunch of kids in the classroom, some people generous, uh, generously um, donating their time to teach them, can have such a massive effect. It's about not just being proficient with computers, it's about dispelling the myth that you can, you have to be, you know, socially inhibited somehow to be good with computers. You know, yeah, if you learned it only in your bedroom like I did, it takes a while to get over the geekiness. But if you learn it in a collaborative environment, in a collaborative learning space, you end up playing well with others. That's a huge social gift. Now, before we play this, I just want to say one other thing. Um, we are very cognizant and grateful that we see that there are some moves afoot to put programming into the Irish curriculum. Uh, and at the Man Point Dojo, we would like to announce today that we are starting a program to, uh, for any teachers, second and third level teachers, who want to come to Coda Dojo and learn the basics of programming so that they are equipped to take that curriculum. We would be delighted to teach them for free, at least at Man Point, and I hope that other Coda Dojos will adopt the same policy. Remember, too, Coda Dojo is a scale-free network. It means that we uh, don't have central control, we just have central resources. So if any of you are, in fact, or know teachers, send them along to the National Software Centre on a Saturday morning, um, and we will do our level best to equip them for the coming uh, curriculum. And I want to leave you with a thought. In this world that we have built, we are more connected than ever before. And this has huge implications. There was a study by, I think, Milgram that said, you know, the uh, connectedness, the degrees of separation is six. I believe that that test has been done recently since Facebook and Twitter, and it's now down to three. Everything is connected. And a lot of this stuff that, you know, we're talking about is actually impacting in every piece of everybody's lives on the planet. And I think Oscar Wilde said, you know, education is a wonderful thing, but it's worth noting from time to time that the things that are really worth knowing can't be taught. It's into this connected view where someone like James gives up his startup career for, and puts it on a two-year hiatus to make Coda Dojo happen. That is an instinctive knowledge of how important this stuff is. So we just want to leave you with a little amusement about how important being connected is. Thank you. Roll a class. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen up. This is your home. It's the only one you got. This place is pretty, but you can't live there. You can't even get there, so I repeat. This is your home. It's the only one you got. Cherish it, protect it. It's the only one you're gonna get. These guys 
guys, they're your neighbors. They ain't going away, they ain't leaving. You have to get along with them. So you have to learn to share. You have to get along. You have to learn to get along. Because they are your neighbors, they're not going away. Okay, all this stuff, the animals, the waters, the sky, the ground, the bugs, the fish, the tacos, the people, they're all connected. Everything is connected. They all depend on one another. If you ignore that, you're doomed. Repeat, doomed, okay? So listen up. It's all one. Not two worlds, not three, one. Just one. So get it in gear. Remember, all is one, okay? Hit it! Thank you. Thank you.